Dit is Papa Alfa Nul Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag, 24 september 2016. Dat is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today's bulletin, as always on Saturdays, will be largely in English. Eerst even een dienstmededeling. Ik heb op het sinds gisteren tijdelijk stopzetten van de morsen oefeningen meerdere reacties gehad. Ik heb daarom besloten om, als het gaat, vanaf vandaag toch opnieuw morsen met de uitzending mee te sturen. Today we have another homemade SSTV image in PD90, which was taken yesterday. And we have some Morse code. In addition to that, we have the propagation news of the RSGB and some other news in English. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find the text on the RSGB's own website. Now the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G3YLA and G4BAO. This week saw the solar flux index increase from 80 to 86, but poor ionospheric conditions due to high-speed solar wind streams dominated the earlier part of the week. The K-index hit 5 on the 20th, but as predicted, geomagnetic conditions improved slightly towards the end of the week. On the bright side, while some days have seen very poor HF conditions, there have been highlights. The Chiltern Ionosond has indicated that the maximum usable frequency over a 3,000 km path has exceeded 21 megs at times, and better autumnal conditions mean that there is DX around. This is an ideal month for working South Africa and South America on 1821 and even 24 megs at times. East-west paths may be better on 14 megs and will improve as we head into October. Don't ignore 30, me 30 metres at the moment, which may deliver some surprises. 80 and 40 metres are also starting to come into their own at dusk and after sunset. Our best advice is to look for days that are geomagnetically quiet, that is when the K-index is 0, 1 or 2. This may be tricky as NOAA predicts very unsettled geomagnetic conditions for 8 days from December the 28th, so work your best DX in the first half of this week. Now for VHF and up propagation. Prospects for tropospheric openings are poor this week with low pressure near the north to the north and west of Britain bringing autumnal weather. For much of the period this will need some quite strong winds at times and little chance of tropo developing. There may be some rain scatter options although this could be difficult with fast moving weather systems. There is likely to be high pressure over the continent and this will place the better tropo conditions over the near continent and across Biscay at times and probably not accessible for most of the country. The sporadic E season seems to be over so it's back to random meteor scatter as the main DX mode on the lower VHF bands. Moon declination is heading negative again this later this week so EME moon windows will shorten as the week goes on. Losses are also increasing as the moon heads out to apogee. But don't despair of the poor VHF conditions. There are plenty of workable satellites in orbit to give you your fix of D VHF DX so why not give them a try? Go to the AMSAT UK website for information. That's it for this week from the Propagation Team. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Historic medium wave band digital contact. Experimentation and pushing the boundaries paid off for two radio amateurs, Steve McDonald, VE7SL in Canada, and Roger Crofts, VK4YB, Queensland, who made a two-way digital contact in the JT9 mode. This path is the longest two-way QSO on the 472 to 479 kilohertz band, which was granted as a secondary allocation to the amateur service at the World Radio Communication Conference in 2012. Steve, VE7SL, says he and Roger, VK4YB, worked each other on 630 metres, the exact frequency being 475.3 kilohertz. He says this is the first ever two-way QSO between North America and Australia on the relatively new 630 metre band. It presently represents the furthest two-way contact on this band worldwide. But I don't expect this record will last very long once the United States gets the band. The distance using the latitude and longitude values of each station rather than maidenhead locators. Precise distance 11,822 kilometres. Ironically, the transverters used at both ends were of the VK4YB design, made in Queensland, and will be reviewed by Justin Giles Clark, VK7TW, in Amateur Radio magazine. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Good morning, this is Robert, VK3DN, with this week's worldwide special interest group news. Defence. 
Well, we may not yet be able to transmit on 60 metres here in VK, but the opportunity exists to hone our shortwave listening skills by listening. An amateur radio military interoperability exercise will take place on October the 31st and November the 1st. The event will begin at 1200 UTC on October the 31st and continue through to 2359 UTC on November the 1st on 60 metres on channels 5.3305 decimal 3465 two three five seven zero and decimal three seven one five. During this exercise military stations will attempt to make radio contact with stations in as many of the three thousand one hundred and forty three US countries as possible. Radio amateurs are providing country status information and will receive a US Department of Defense interoperability QSL card. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Radio Scouting, Jamboree on the Air, or JOTA, is on the third weekend in October. Worldwide, more than a million scouts and guides will soon take part in JOTA via amateur radio. JOTA stations are controlled by radio amateurs, although they may not be always heard at the microphone. Some scouts, guides and their leaders have their own stations, but many take part through our local radio clubs and individual radio amateurs. The 59th JOTA will be on October the 14th to the 16th and may also use vision or digital modes. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio. Search continues for missing aircraft. A regular Weissen New South Wales event with the Bushwalkers Wilderness Rescue Squad and several others is in search of the Barrington Tops National Park about 200 kilometres north of Sydney looking for the missing aircraft VHMDX. Weissen New South Wales President Steve Hyman, VK2BOS, says this exercise searches for the Cessna 210 missing with five people on board in a stormy night in August 1981. Weissen was involved in the original search and in the 35 years since. The pilot of VHMDX took off Proserpine in far north Queensland, refuelled the last time at Coolangatta in Queensland for Bankstown in New South Wales, and over the Barrington Tops he radioed that his aircraft was unstable, losing altitude and may have had a lightning strike and ice on the wings. Steve VK2BOS says that about 50 were involved last weekend, but unable to find a trace. In many places they had to cut through thick vines while avoiding gimpy gimpy stinging trees that can result in severe pain for humans that lasts for days or even months. Some 12 from Wyson, New South Wales met the communications challenge posed by the extremely rugged terrain. Each volunteer had rainproof communications and in contact with Weiss and New South Wales at several command posts. A Bushwalkers Wilderness Rescue Squad team along with Weiss and New South Wales have been conducting a review to narrow down the search area. It also uses LIDAR, a surveying technology of laser scanning and 3D imaging. The plan is to solve the mystery disappearance of VHMDX, Australia's only unsolved aircraft crash. Steve Hyman, VK2BOS, told WIA News and Jim Linton, IARU Region 3 Chairman, Disaster Communications Committee, that those Wyson members present expressed a desire to return next year and continue to chip away at the huge potential search area while developing and maintaining their skills.
Deze middags zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Volgt nu nog een licht versluierd, enigszins commercieel bericht. Het bedrijf Wokka Wokka doet voor het eerst sinds enige tijd weer van zich horen. Het is de directeur van Wokka Wokka niet ontgaan hoe populair de modulatie soort DMR in korte tijd van niet is geworden. Speciaal voor zendamateurs heeft het unieke merk nu een bijzondere DMR portofoon ontwikkeld... ...die binnenkort met een hoop zwier op de amateurmarkt zal worden geslingerd. Zoals we van Wokka Wokka gewend zijn, pakt het bedrijf de zaken niet kinderachtig aan. Just to stand out in the crowd levert Wokka Wokka zijn porto's af met een riant vermogen van zo'n 180 watt. Ja, u hoort het goed. Laat de anderen met de vergeefs roepen. Met de MD718A156201QE extra van Wokka Wokka zult u altijd worden gehoord. Het apparaat wordt geleverd compleet met acculader, een modern ogende boodschappentrolley met dezelfde designfeatures als de portofoon zelf en aansluitkabels tussen de portofoon en de accutrolley van voldoende dikte. Als extra feature is de boodschappentrolley voorzien van een 2,75 meter hoge, stevige, uitschuifbare antennemast waarop eventueel een zetantenne kan worden gemonteerd. De boodschappentrolley kan als handbagage in het vliegtuig worden meegenomen en de handzame acculader is tevens geschikt om uw autoaccu mee te kunnen laden. Het bedrijf heeft in een persbericht aangegeven hoge verwachtingen van het nieuwe product te hebben, waarvoor een prijsindicatie is gegeven van slechts 950 euro.